Hello, my name is Sergio Vial. I'm an orthopedic surgeon in Santiago, Chile, and my presentation is going to be about guided growth with staples. Staples were first published by Blount and Clark in 1949 in the Using Humans, and it is a transitory epiphysis based on the Hoytel Folkman principle that when you compress a physis, it stops its growth. It can, we can use it to make angular or length corrections, but it can make a limb shortening. The angular correction speed depends on two factors. First, on the growth rate of the physis, it's uh, faster in the femur than the tibia, and in the distance from the staple to the far edge of the growth plate. The shorter the distance, the faster the correction. The surgical techniques is that you need to use three staples per side because of the physis shape. It's extraperiostal. The plant staple has a reinforced corners to stop its breakage. And it's recommended that in the femur you use 15 mm staples and in the tibia 10 mm staple. It has a rebound effect of about 5 degrees and it has many complications. Extrusion from 2 to 8 percent, it has metal reaction, it, we can have an overcorrection, a premature closing of the physis, and that's why it's, no, it's not recommended to use a staple for more than 24 months. It can make an anterior recurvatum. We can have a nerve lesion due to the surgical exposure, we can have infection, and we can have an epiphyseal to metaphyseal displacement of the staple. There are many publications. This publication uh, makes us an analysis between uh, staples and eight plate in rabbits, and it shows that the initial correction in four weeks is higher with staples, but the final result at eight weeks is similar. And also shows that staples shorten the femur length, but the eight plate do not. So, as a suggestion, the authors recommend that if there is a little remnant growth, we can use staples. This other, public, this other paper sees the importance of a single tether because they compared an 8-plate with two staples and they found that it is one of more pronounced deformity with the 8-plate. One staple versus two staples, it was a more pronounced deformity with one staple. So, they compared an 8-plate with one staples and they had similar result. And this is to, supposed to be because of a single tether and of the widening of the single, st uh, single staple that works as if it was an eight plate. But in humans, there are no statistical differences in humans between different, the different techniques. In limb length in inequality, there's this paper that compares with two, that uses two staples per side, and it uh, results that in the proximal TV epiphysis, there's a 56% of risk of having a virus. This is because of the fibula, because of an inadequate lateral staple placement, or because of a conical shape of proximal tibial physis. There are also positions. And also they found that in the distal femur epiphysis, there is no deformity. Also, they find that in children under 11 years old, there's a higher angulation risk. And this analysis that make, uh, analysis, uh, sees the rate of correction after asymmetrical physical suppression, they found that male under 40 and female under 12 years old, there's no difference between staples and eight plate in the distant femur, but that the staples correct less in the proximal tibia. So in summary, the advantages of staples are the cost. They are cheaper. Here in Chile, we can find staples for at least $30. It has decades of usage, it's a reproducible technique, it has a predictable evolution, and it has a transitory effect. But the disadvantages are the cost, the blunt stable is much more expensive, it needs a wide exposure, it needs a correct placement of the three stables, there's a need for radiological control, we need to do a hardware removal, and there are also osteosynthesis complications and there is a rebound effect of about 5 degrees. Um, besides that, the staples make a lip shortening. Thank you. Any comments? This is my email.